Hey guys, Comic Boom here to talk about Doomsday Clock number four. And uh, this issue deals with the origins of the new Rorschach. This entire issue is basically the origin of this new individual by the name of uh, Reggie Long. Now, uh, just a, a heads up here, this review is going to contain spoilers. And so if uh, you don't want spoilers for issue four of Doomsday Clock, I suggest you... Uh, uh, stop the video and then come back maybe afterwards. I got some uh, I got some observations and perhaps some insights, dare I say, on, on this issue. So uh, just fair warning. So having said that, from here on in, it's spoiler. So here we go. All right. Well, what we learn about uh, Rorschach, uh, the new Rorschach, is in fact his name is Reggie Long. He is uh, an African-American, and his father was, from the original Watchmen series, his father was Dr. Malcolm Long, who, those of you who read Watchmen, that was actually the original Rorschach's psychiatrist. Now, the original Rorschach was an individual by the name of Walter Kovacs, and Walter Kovacs, when he was caught and institutionalized, Walter Kovacs' uh, psychiatrist was Dr. Malcolm Long. And it was Dr. Malcolm Long's journal that formed a large part of the interesting narratives that were contained in the original Watchmen series. And now what's interesting about this is Walter Long uh, had, had a son named Reggie. And th that's who we're introduced to. And what's, what's very interesting is uh, when I read, I reread the Watchmen series and there wasn't really much of a, an indication that Walter, Lo uh, Walter Long and his wife had a son it wasn't really referenced in the series but basically the uh, what, what formed the psychological basis of this new Rorschach what really changed Reggie's psyche into become more like the original Rorschach is the the destruction of New York City that occurred in the at the end of the Watchmen series that Ozymandias had orchestrated the destruction of New York City uh, it was revealed didn't kill everyone in New York City approximately 3 million people, New Yorkers were killed but there were survivors and Reggie was one of the survivors and one of the things about the survivors of New York City is that a lot of them went crazy a lot of them went insane and a lot of them ended up being institutionalized because of the effects that they experienced uh, as a result of the surviving that nuclear explosion now, Reggie was one of those survivors. Now, his parents, uh, Walter Long and uh, Walter's wife, uh, I believe Gloria was her name, were, were killed in the destruction of New York City. But Reggie survived, and Reggie ultimately became institutionalized. And during his institutionalization, uh, Reggie, he was trying to cut, gain his sanity back. And one of the individuals that helped him gain his sanity back was one of the Minutemen. Reggie, in his attempt to commit suicide, ends up running into the Mothman whose real name is Byron. Uh, I never, maybe I never read deep enough, I never did get Byron's last name. But in any event, the Mothman, whose first name is Byron, uh, ends up, uh, Reggie ends up, he's, he runs into the Mothman, who uh, he strikes up a conversation with, and the Mothman gives him some advice. The Mothman tells him something about himself, and the Mothman says something which underscores the one of the central themes of this issue, and likely one of the, I think, the meta themes that speaks outside the issue, and that is, the Mothman says, I see what I want to see. In other words, I might be in prison here, I might be institutionalized, but I see what I want to see. Because, just a little bit of background here, the Mothman made up the Minutemen. Uh, and the Minutemen were, was the superhero team in the Watchmen universe that consisted of uh, Captain Metropolis, consisted of the Silhouette, consisted of uh, Night Owl, and a comedian. And th at, at some point in the Watchmen history, the, it became illegal to be a costume vigilante and they were rounded up and essentially imprisoned those that didn't uh, follow the new laws and uh, Mothman was one of them who's rounded up and he went a little bit crazy and Mothman Byron's own family the Mothman's family basically disowned him his own father said said to his sister pretend uh, pretend that your brother is dead and the Mothman's sister is Betty and at the end of this at the end of this comic you see a series of letters that Byron the Mothman wrote, wrote to his sister Betty throughout his stay right up until the time that essentially he escaped and ultimately died at the end of this issue. Now, what's interesting about that is that the Mothman throughout his institutionalization 
he loved to fly and he believed he could fly and he saw what he wanted to see and I got some I got a lot of reminiscent uh, I got this reminded me a little bit of Shawshank Redemption because the Mothman the Mothman always thought of himself as free as being literally free in his mind he could see whatever he wanted he chose to see whatever he wanted and despite being institutionalized he would literally uh, find materials and he would build himself some wings like uh, like a moth <laughs> and he would literally jump off the building and he would fly away and then he'd bring he'd bring back supplies from all over the place uh, because that's what he did and what he did when he during his many excursions where he'd fly off and then he'd be captured again and they'd take it back or he'd sometimes he'd fly off and come back to the institution he'd bring back different stuff and he'd give Reggie some stuff and one of the things that he gave Reggie is he'd fly into New York City and he would he would uh, uh, there's parts of New York City that after the nuclear explosion he'd find it uh, parts of New York City were quarantined off you couldn't enter it well the Mothman would fly into those areas in particular he flew into the former home of Dr. Malcolm and Gloria Long uh, where Reggie used to live and he found he brought to Reggie uh, Reggie Long he brought his father's journals which included his journals and his uh, memories and recollections of interviewing uh, Walter Kovacs the original Rorschach and so he read his father's materials he read his father's journal uh, his interviews with Rorschach and so he became somewhat obsessed a little bit with Rorschach meanwhile throughout this throughout the story Reggie has in his mind throughout his incarceration what keeps him going is his friend Mothman's words to him that look I see what I want to see and if you, you ought to do that too you see what you want to see and throughout throughout the his incarceration of course Reggie is given the Rorschach test and eventually he, he chooses to see different things on the blot test right one of the first things he chose to see was the Mothman he chose to see Mothman and ultimately what uh, there's there's pivotal moments throughout this story that that lead to the um, transformation of Reggie into Rorschach now the interplay here if you if you recall I, I read the there's I believe it was issue I can't remember exactly uh, because I got the omnibus I got the omnibus version of Watchmen and I read the chapter that deals with uh, Walter Kovacs origin the pivotal moment that turned Walter Kovacs into Rorschach was that he was a he was a costume vigilante that was actually fairly gentle and he didn't kill and he didn't harm criminals he just captured them and tied them up for, for the police to get but the pivotal moment that turned Walter Kovacs into Rorschach was he pursu pursued a kidnapper someone who had kidnapped a six-year-old uh, boy and he promised the parents that he would, he, he would find the boy unharmed and of course rather than that happening it was horrible he found the boy he found he did end up finding the boy but the boy was being eaten by uh, dogs and the dog's owner of course was the one that had kidnapped the boy and he this owner was very sick and actually fed fed the the young six-year-old to his dogs and uh, that experiencing that seeing that uh, Walter Kovacs um, as Rorschach then really he he even though he was Rorschach in name he wasn't Rorschach in mind he but that particular horrific adventure um, made him go a little psycho and you know he killed the dogs and he ultimately ended up torturing and killing the uh, perpetrator and that experience turned Walter Kovacs into Rorschach and it was a very pivotal moment one of the best issues in the original Watchmen series now in this particular issue it's not as quite as uh, it's not quite as great what transformed Reggie Long into the new Rorschach the pivotal moment that but that changed the Reggie Long into the new Rorschach was that he's institutionalized and it's revealed that they want to move him that all the all the survivors of New York City the government is rounding up to take into a special place a special uh, facility in, in, in Washington DC and at the same time that they're doing that it's revealed that Ror it's revealed that Adrian Veidt Adrian Veidt the Ozymandias is in fact the one responsible for the destruction of New York City and that moment the memories of all those reading all of his father's journals about Rorschach and, and that moment of realizing that it was Ozymandias that caused the destruction of New York City it killed his parents that drove him crazy while he's trying to regain his sanity 
all all his all his life experiences are coming together and throughout his life he always kept his anger in he always kept in he he never fought he never stood up for himself all of that exploded all at once and at that pivotal moment that's when that's when Reggie Cho, Reggie Long chose to see Rorschach when he the next time he looked at that blot he saw Rorschach that that was his transformation and it was a uh, I thought it was well written it was kind of deep I had to read it a few times to really appreciate I say that those common themes there and it really helped by by me rereading the the original Watchmen series it was very very well done very well played now uh, a number of other things when uh, upon discovering upon seeing in the news that uh, uh, Adrian that Ozzy Mandeus was in fact responsible for the destruction of New York City and upon knowing that he is going to be transferred the next day out to a new government facility, Mothman helps a Reggie escape. And there's this moment when they're running out uh, and they're, they're escaping the facility. They set it on fire to create a distraction to get out, to, to run away. And the Mothman stops and he looks around and he's captivated by the light of the fire. And like a moth to the flame, literally, just like it's very cliche, but I think very symbolically well done. The Mothman tells Reggie, I, ha I can't do this. He says to Reggie, it's been calling to me. I see it. And, he, and Reggie says, see what, Byron? What do you see? And he very clearly didn't understand. But what the Mothman saw, what Byron saw, was, I think, his own sense of enlightenment. He saw the light. And that symbolism, of that, that idea that you see what you want to see. We all see what we want to see. What did Byron see? Well, Byron saw some kind of light. He must have saw, perhaps, in his own way, his ending. Or perhaps he saw the way things would end. He saw a kind of redemption. Now, this ties into the, the end of the comic. When, when Reggie finds Ozymandias, Ozymandias says to him, I am a monster. What have I done? And then Ozymandias says to him, I saw the light too late. I'm sorry. I... And upon hearing those words, Reggie, Reggie collapses, Rorschach collapses. And I think the reason why Rorschach collapses at that moment is when he finally he has there, he, he, he's, he has an opportunity to kill Ozymandias. And Ozymandias feels horrible. He feels at fault. And of course he is because Ozymandias did orchestrate the destruction of New York City. Uh, but even though he may have had some... Uh, a good motive necessarily to he had a good motive arguably uh to save the planet and create long lasting peace by sacrificing three million lives in new york city the fact is is that he felt really bad and he and he would have been quite willing to have rorschach to have reggie kill him but he says to reggie i saw the light too late and just like the mothman byron saw the light and went toward it rorschach reggie sees that Ozymandias has seen the light. And perhaps at that moment, Reggie also sees the light as well, in a sense. And there's a moment there perhaps where both of them are seeing what they want to see, but perhaps they're seeing the same thing, that everyone is looking toward a redemption. Whether it was Mothman uh, throughout his career as a Minuteman, he made some mistakes as a vigilante, but uh, he, he felt that for the most part he was doing the right thing, but he acknowledged that he made some mistakes. And he, Reggie was, uh, the Mothman was always trying to gain redemption in the eyes of his sister Betty, who he sent letters to that are contained at the end of this story. And meanwhile, Reggie is trying to, is, he, he's always seeing what he wants to see, and he sees something different every time because he, ch he changes his mind in terms of what he wants to see, and he's searching for that light as well. We're all searching for the light. We're all searching for the meaning and the redemption in our lives. And Ozymandias is also seeking redemption, particularly as, as Rorschach, Reggie, discovers at the end, Ozymandias is dying. And so Ozymandias sees the cancer in his head on the x-ray, and, but he also sees that he's the only one that could probably save his own life, but he can't operate on himself. Ozymandias sees the possibility of redemption, and that's why they together go to look for Dr. Manhattan, because that's the way of seeking and finding the light to, to save humanity. And Dr. Manhattan can be symbolic of God symbolic of finding that light. And what's also interesting is that the whole, the, this theme of the mosquito or the moth to the flame throughout the entire book, there's images of a mosquito being drawn to a, uh, a zapper. 
and there's a this zapper is within Arkham Asylum and it shows this zapper more than once where a, a mosquito is being flying flies to the zapper and the zapper has a blue light to it the zapper has a blue light to it and the, the mosquito gets zapped obviously when it goes near it and it shows this in conjunction with uh, different cells of Arkham Asylum it shows Waylon Jones uh, cell which he's Killer Croc. It also sh at one point showed Mr. Freeze and it also showed Harvey Dent's cell and uh, so it's it's very interesting to to, sh to see what exactly is uh, going on in Arkham Asylum. That theme of a moth being attracted to a flame is duplicated throughout the comic by the image of a mosquito being attracted to a zapper and the zapper has a blue hinge of light just like Dr. Manhattan does and it's very interesting that at different points throughout this comic it shows a mosquito being attracted to a zapper and why is that again it's to reinforce this idea that we're all we might think we're higher being life forms but in many ways we're just like the mosquito being attracted to the light at the end of the day we're all attracted to what drives us. We're all attracted to something that, that forms the basis of our lives, that gives us the primary motivation, whatever that might be. And I think that's what, that's what really drives this. Now, this is tied in with Dr. Manhattan because it plants seeds here in terms of who Dr. Manhattan might actually be. Is Dr. Manhattan Mr. Freeze? Is he Killer, is he killer Croc? Is he Harvey Dent? Who is Dr. Manhattan? Maybe Dr. Manhattan is one of the inmates in Arkham Asylum. Again, we've got more options here. We've got more possible candidates as to who Dr. Manhattan might be. Because at the very end, what's very interesting is on the very last page, we see the mosquito trying to escape into freedom. This, there's one mosquito who is trying to fly, not into the light, but actually to escape the prison. But uh, rather than escape, the mosquito gets zapped by what looks like being zapped by the electricity emitted by the electrons emitted by Dr. Manhattan. So the mosquito at the end is not killed by the light because the mosquito at the end, one mosquito avoids the light and tries to escape the prison and moves away from the zapper but ends up getting zapped by what we believe, what looks like Dr. Manhattan's electricity. So that is symbolic of the fact and that ties into the earlier theme about do we have free will? Do we have destiny? This is one mosquito that tries to exercise free will and not fly toward the light, uh, that it's trying to exercise its free will and to escape, but Dr. Manhattan won't let it. The idea that Dr. Manhattan decides their fate, that Dr. Manhattan is rewriting all of our histories, that Dr. Manhattan is God and controls everything. That's what that's symbolic of. Do we have free will or, or are things predestined? What is this? Dr. Manhattan is once again not just controlling the lives of everyone on the planet, arguably, but even the mosquitoes, even the moths. And do we have free will or don't we? And that, that ties into the book that Superman was reading that was on Superman's bedside in issue one of Doomsday Clock. Guys, the themes here continue to build and it's so rich in its history. It's really, really well done. Another Easter egg in this comic is when the Mothman and Reggie were escaping the institution, uh, Mothman, of course, turns back and walks into the flames. But uh, uh, as Reggie escapes, Reggie ultimately discovers that the Mothman left him some some trinkets to help him escape. One of them was at, at the, one of the original masks of Rorschach himself, so that Reggie could, of course, become the new Rorschach with the mask and all. And the other thing he left him was a ticket on an Arctic ship that would take him ultimately out to where he would find Ozymandias. The name of that uh, Arctic ship is Percy Bish. And the significance of Percy Bish is that Percy Bish Shelley is, is uh, he was a, a romantic poet that uh, from 1790, born in 1792, died in July 1822, was one of the major English romantic poets and regarded by uh, some as among the finest lyric poets in the English language and one of the most influential. One of his most influential poems was called Ozymandias. Now the poem Ozymandias was written in 1818 and it describes a broken statue of a legendary king of ancient times lying forgotten in the desert with these words carved on its base. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings, 
Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. And you can kind of see the, the relevance of how it might pertain to the Watchmen story of Ozymandias. Because Ozymandias meant well. He had a lot of power. He's the smartest man on the planet. And he orchestrated a fake alien invasion to try to bring about peace to the world. But ultimately ended up ultimately destroying his own Watchmen universe. And now he's trying essentially to find God, or in this case, find Dr. Manhattan to try to save and to bring find some kind of redemption and to save the world that he had all but destroyed due to his own hubris. So that's that's what's interesting about that, that Rorschach is on a ship named by a poet that wrote that kind of poem. So that's interesting. There's also yet another Easter egg, and that is at the end of this issue, uh, again, the very final page, in addition to showing the uh, mosquito being zapped by what is likely Dr. Manhattan, we also see on uh, as the guard goes by, as the guard goes by a cell, we see a picture. And that picture is actually a picture of Janie Slater and John Osterman. And John Osterman was Dr. Manhattan when he was a human, before he was transformed into Dr. Manhattan. His wife was Janie Slater. And it's a picture of him and his wife, of John Osterman and his wife, Janie Slater in better times. Now the significance of that particular photograph cannot be emphasized enough because it goes back to the time and it's reflective of a time when Dr. Manhattan was still human, when he was still John Osterman, when he was still capable of loving and being human and he never obtained godlike powers. That was before he became a god in the form of Dr. Manhattan. And the original story of Watchmen, we have to remember, is as the Watchmen story, that 12 issue series progressed, John Osterman, once he became Dr. Manhattan, he slowly began to lose touch with his humanity. By the end of Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan wanted to leave the earth and explore the universe because he was more than human. He was, he was godlike and he, he left the earth in order to sort of explore and ultimately he, as he stated, even perhaps make his own universes and maybe that's exactly what he did. Maybe he's the one who made the rebirth DC universe. That's what's so fascinating about this. And the symbol of that photograph in the pages of Watchmen initially was that, that photograph was the one tether that Dr. Manhattan maintained because it kept him in touch with his humanity. By the end of Watchmen, he had discarded that photograph. As, as symbolically as if saying he no longer needs his humanity because he's one with the universe and he was dispensing with his humanity. That photograph, when he discarded it, uh, that was his last tether to humanity. And what's interesting is here we have the return of that photograph suggesting that Dr. Manhattan maybe is trying to find his humanity again. Maybe he's trying to find his way back. Maybe Godhood isn't exactly what Dr. Manhattan thought it was going to be and maybe he longs for mortality. Maybe he longs to be John Ostrom again. He, he longs for something that he can't find even with the powers of a god. And maybe that's love. Maybe that's uh, the way it used to be. Maybe there's something about humanity that appeals to even a god uh, like Dr. Manhattan. And that's what's interesting about that. What does the return of that photograph mean? And in any event, it's uh, when you look back at the images of the original Watchmen series, uh, it, it was of happier times between Janie Slater, Dr., uh, John Osterman's uh, first wife, uh, and when he became Dr. Manhattan, of course, he had an affair. Uh, his girlfriend became the Silk Spectre. And, until ultimately the Silk Spectre betrayed Dr. Manhattan and ended up with Night Owl. Uh, but in any event, that's the Watchmen story, and Dr. Manhattan at the end takes off into the universe ostensibly to create his own. Did he create the Rebirth universe? We don't know. But the return of that photograph suggests that maybe if Dr. Manhattan is indeed returned, that he probably wants some connection to humanity again, and he's seeking it out. There's something that Dr. Manhattan is missing, and the return of that photograph, I think, gives me some hope that Dr. Manhattan himself is also seeking a kind of redemption, or at least a return to, uh, to what he considers home again. Because ultimately, the life, and death, the life and death cycle of life, when we talk about returning home, a lot of us, we could 
there's that symbolism again, returning home, returning back into the light, the moth to the flame, returning home again. Can, can we return home again, return to heaven whence we first came? So many, the, the, the cycle here of, of rebirth and death and life, it just runs rampant throughout this series and we're only at issue four. And yeah, two more guest appearances, I guess. And in this issue, uh, Batman does make an appearance. He is actually disguised as one of the doctors in Arkham Asylum who interviews uh, Reggie Long, and uh, he's shown throughout. And so he's still trying to figure out exactly what's up with uh, Reggie Long. He hasn't quite figured out what his motive is or what's going on. Batman, as we know, has read Rorschach's journal, but he doesn't know what to make of it. And so it's interesting in that regard. Uh, the other one who, the other character that makes an appearance here is Saturn Girl. And we originally saw Saturn Girl in the original, in the Rebirth one shot, uh, which has been out for, that came out about a, what, a year and a half ago now? The Rebirth one shot, Saturn Girl is from the future. And she is basically a Jane Doe. Uh, she's the, the unknown girl that is in Arkham Asylum. She's basically a Jane Doe. They don't know her identity. But she seems to be very perpetually happy. She seems to be very optimistic. She basically, and when she made her appearance in Rebirth, she said that everything's going to be all right. And and the series, it, it's revealed that the Vignettes, the memories that we have of Reggie Long, his memories that we see throughout this issue are actually images of what Saturn Girl, who's a telepath, Saturn Girl is a telepath from the, from the 30th century, a member of the Legion of Superheroes, what we're actually seeing are vignettes of what Saturn Girl is seeing, telepathically reading Rorschach's mind. And that's very interesting. And, and she even makes a comment to him that his mind's a very interesting place. But she wants to see if, uh, if Rorschach is someone she can trust. At the end, she reveals that uh, she wants to. Es she basically wants to escape because apparently she's she's not going to be in our time period for a long period of time. She's going to be leaving soon, whatever that means. And meanwhile, so she she helps Rorschach escape, and uh, she helps Rorschach escape by opening a door. And there's this bright light, and again reminiscent of light moving toward the moth, toward the flame, moving toward home, moving toward that of discovering the truth, whatever that might be. Again, very symbolic of the moving toward the light throughout this entire issue. Saturn Girl helps Rorschach escape, and it ends with uh, Batman having a discussion with uh, Alfred, although it doesn't directly show them, it just shows the mask that Batman was wearing in disguise, saying that they clearly had underestimated Rorschach. They know he's escaped. They don't exactly know how, although I'm sure Batman has been able to figure out that both him and Jane Doe escaped. And so he probably figures that their, their two identities are connected. So again, guys, lots to uh, <laughs> lots going on in this issue. And so much is building up here. It looks really good. Also, quick, I just realized as I'm thinking of this, uh, Byron, Byron's last name is Byron Lewis. I'll probably put that on the, uh, I'll probably embed that when I edit this. But Byron Lewis uh, is referenced in the original Watchmen uh, by, uh, by Silk Spectre, I believe. Uh, in the original Watchmen series, uh, she mentions that Byron Lewis was was in the bug house, so to speak, basically in an insane asylum. Now, so Bu Byron Lewis, that is a call out to the Mothman from the in the original Watchmen. Again, so much rich history here, guys. Another great issue. Again, it would mean more if uh, you if you've read the Watchmen, you'll get more out of it that way. But there's still some gems there to enjoy, even if you haven't. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and comic boom, out.